This show is gas, but y'all already knew that. What's going on, people? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Batman animated series retrospective, where we're doing every single Batman animated show, but we're just going to talk about it for a little bit. We're going to do it season by season of each show, so this might take a little bit of time. Yeah. But thankfully, and we're also doing it in, you know, chronological release order. So thankfully, we have, like, the peak Right at like the very start, but that might not be. I good. mean, actually, there's like the '60s, like there's like the '60s based uh, show as well. We can watch that. The one that had a crossover Scooby Doo. Oh, you're right, but we don't really care about that. We already started. I just with think this. it's. I just think it's interesting how the animated series started and how what it became. Like, it's in like I would say, like me and I'm actually like been doing our research and like most of the animated series seems to be based on like the uh, Michael Keaton stuff. It's not officially confirmed, but. The fact that, like, first of all, the scores are exactly the same. Pretty much exactly the same. Which, by the way, I just want to say right now, the soundtrack for the animated series is actually, like, gas. Like, it's actually really good. Like, I would listen to it. Like, I'd now listen to it on, on my own time. <laughs> Reese's theme is, like, incredible. I know, right? Um, And another thing that I love about this show, that, unfortunately... A little, a little bit of a spoiler leaves when we get to the new Batman adventures... I love how every start of an episode ha- has its own art. Mm-hmm. That's like really the, cool. the art's like really good, right? Yeah, like it just kind of gets you into the mood of what like the episode's about about to be. Yeah, Remember Rice and Sue like had those like little things. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like that in a sense. Kind of, yeah. But so I think the 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 main the main start the main focus that I want to, that I want to that I want to touch on first and tell me if you agree with me here, Liam, but the, the, this show had the, had the perfect starting episodes. What? uh, What? There's something about man, uh, bad on leather wings. There's the, there's like Christmas Christmas with the Joker. Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Yeah. Last laugh. Yeah. Like, like four straight out of the gate banger episodes. And then, uh, the fifth one's poison Ivy. That one is okay. That one, that one's good. Like it's a good juncture. It's kind of weird, like of all the characters, like the first one to be get, that gets properly introduced, like who's like a mainstay. It's not, like Mamet gets like one more time after the first episode. He which like, like Mamet gets like one more episode. I think mm-hmm. yeah. the first one gets introduced like completely like in the full, like with like a full like introduction. And everything was probably just was probably Poison Ivy. Yeah, because uh, another like you know argument is that um, we. The which is funny because the 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 a lot of the characters that were in the earlier Keaton films don't get introduced. In, introduced. Like I know that like show. the two characters don't get introduced at all. Throughout the the, only, the two like villains who don't, who don't get introduced are Two Face and I mean not Two Face Joker Joker and Penguin. Yeah. Which by the way, it's yeah. the Penguin has his debut episode and I got Batman in my basement. That's Two like, Face gets like some of the one of the best episodes. So I, I'll get to that. Honestly. I got Batman in my in my basement is like kind of garbage. It's not the, it's not garbage, but I think in comparison to the rest of the series, it just isn't the same. Wasn't Kevin Conroy sick? That was why they uh, couldn't. Yeah, um, so I can see if there's uh, there's nothing they really there's nothing they say. But yeah, I mean, they have no notes. But um, so I guess my question is next: What is your favorite episode in this season? I actually have I actually have a couple. But Shoot. I'd say, I'd say, great. The but where the great ghost is like definitely one of my favorites, <sighs> purely just because it has Adam West in it, and like the idea of like Bruce having like a childhood hero and him finally get the team up with him. Uh-huh. It's like imagine that living, imagine living that childhood fantasy. That'd be like if you and me got to like team up with Batman. No, dude, look. The thing is, I think the like you know cool part is that like he he literally got to show gray gray ghost. Inside of the Batcave, mm-hmm. his own like tribute to the uh, Gray Ghost, uh-huh. and then I love how at the end of the episode, Bruce says the Gray Ghost was my uh, hero, and he and he you know s- and he you know still is. Uh-huh. Like, like okay, can we just like going on like, with Bruce? I just want to say this: season one, Bruce and Batman, like the dynamic is like actually really good. Like he's just such a he. 
he just is like probably he's probably one of my favorite Batman's actually just based on like what I've seen from from what I remember and what I've seen. He's he has like a couple like jokes here and there. He's mostly serious, but like he has like a couple like smirk jokes here and there. I mean, he laughs at the end of Joker's favor. Yeah, that's a great episode. We, we'll we'll get to that, but like I mean. I mean, like he's he's awesome. He's able to win most of his fights. He he uses technology, but doesn't use it like for the entire for like everything. Yeah, he's cool. He's he's like the best Batman, in my opinion. And a lot and he's of- voiced by Kevin Conroy, which <laughs> rest in peace. But my God, he's such a great uh, he's such a great voice actor. Like like nothing to fear. I am vengeance. I, I am, am the knight. I am Batman. It's we, such a good line. We can't do that like him though. Yeah, he like. Like if we could pull it up, I would. I always love that line. I can. <laughs> We're actually pulling it up. Yeah, yeah, but like shit. Like actually, like the voice cast in general is like really good. Like the entire voice cast for the animated series, like super strong. We're not gonna hear it, but no, we don't. We don't need to hear it. It's okay. Okay, it's okay. If you don't need, if we can't pull it up. Wow. Oh, it's just he said it so many times. times. But yeah, I mean, um. But what's your favorite episode in this season? It, um, hmm, definitely appointment in uh, Crime Alley. Appointment in Crime Alley. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one too. I love that one. I really love the introspective Batman episodes. Like, is that really? Like, I think that's a great episode because, like, it's both. It shows like how. It shows like the business of his job every day. Cause like that entire episode, like most of the stuff that goes on episode, some of it's related to uh the main plot of like the of the uh, crime alley being blown up, but mm-hmm. some of it's also just like, oh, a train, like a bus is like being is off rails. We gotta stop, we gotta save them, guys. Uh-huh. It's like it doesn't even matter that much, but it's like such an interesting, like it just it's nice seeing Batman like have a busy day. Like it's like such a good episode because like it's not like a big super villain, it's just random shit happening. Right. And, and like and the, Liam said at the end of the episode that he got like a tear in his eye because there's that ending shot of like the you two know, roses. No, no, no. Mm. Leslie Tompkins hugging Bruce after he lost yeah. his like mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it's kind of like I think it's kind of like it's kind of tell don't show that like Bruce <laughs> knows who Leslie Tompkins. Like also, she's great. Yeah, Leslie is, and like it's like, oh, she was one of character Bruce when he uh, lost his parents, which also like, does she know Alfred? Yeah, she knows Alfred. Like, yeah, hmm. yeah. But um, the thing with Leslie is, I kind of love how like she knows that Bruce is Batman, and she like fully a hundred percent supports him, mm-hmm. but also seems to be kind of like disappointed that he like chose to do that with, with his him. life. Yeah, it's like. Bruce, for God's sake, could you at least be Catman instead? <laughs> <laughs> I would take anything except bats. Also, Two Face's origin arc is gas. The like, two parters are like, I just want to say, like for the for the time, like I think like the only other, like what are the other shows? This X Men show and probably the Spider Man the, the, the ninety show. Yeah, like in comparison to the other shows at the time, like. They were, they were like I think this it was still like pretty like it wasn't like dark dark but like it was it that was more serious themes yeah it felt like they it didn't feel like it was like the other shows they feel like they were copping out either most of the time but with Batman I felt like they were like not like they felt like they weren't trying to consciously ob- they don't like have, they didn't have an obligation to have like an action toy set piece every episode yeah like what you're saying is that they didn't make the show to sell toys i know they were trying to sell toys on the show and this show sold toys it worked Believe yeah me, it worked i mean unfortunately i've actually found out guess what uh guess what i had to run next to what 60 minutes really one of the longest most like watched tv shows of all time wow and it like floundered hard damn poor m8 series man no but like the thing is the thing is, the thing. So, what do you think? Not so much your favorite, but what do you think is the best episode? Heart of Ice. Oh my god. Heart of Ice, man. Like, see, the thing is, I'll let you explain why, but dude, Joker's favor is phenomenal. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you about Joker's favor more. I love that one too. But Heart of Ice is like so, like, 
it it reestablishes like I think we, at the time we think like nowadays the episode's kind of like rewatching it like I think we we just be like oh it's just a standard Mr. Freeze story uh-huh. but at the time they changed Mr. Freeze from being just a uh, average schmo with a, with an ice gimmick mm-hmm. to actually having like an interesting like motivation like interesting like character like he's like a he like. You don't. You feel sorry for him in some ways, but like he's still a villain at the end of the day. Yeah, but like you feel bad for him though. Mm-hmm. And people like rag on, on Batman beating him with the uh, chicken soup. <laughs> but at the same time, I think it just kind of just, like, <laughs> yeah. Which, but, but at the same time, I think it's actually kind of really cool how like Batman like has ingenuity and says, "Okay, chicken soup, go." <laughs> and I think it's like the random bullshit go line, but with Batman. I think that the thing that I love is probably like Joker's favor. Because that is just such a Joker centric episode. Episode they introduce Harley Quinn. Yeah, that. But the fact that Joker loses because he gets like outfoxed is actually by like, a regular schmo. Yeah, I think it like really. I love that episode because like it just shows like the average life of a go- of like someone who lives in Gotham, uh-huh. and then like what at the beginning at least, and like shows like what what the superhero world looks like to them. It's just like random bullshit for no reason. <laughs> Yeah. Like the beginning, just like seeing like police chase and then seeing Batman go by. It's like, really? Yeah. It's like, I would be pissed off too if I had a bad day and I saw that happen. Uh-huh. And, and, but like, the thing is, um, the, the, the thing about that episode is that like Joker, <laughs> we see, and this is why, especially in season one, this is the best Batman because like Batman's laughing at the end of the episode it's so f- it's like one of the few times i've ever seen him laugh in the entire like franchise and it's like yeah it's actually a pretty good joke <laughs> yeah yeah it's like but um mm. so i guess we have to get- i never realized that like joker got like four episodes in this in this series and the first season one he got four episodes yeah um there was also uh the one with mary hill's kid uh-huh be a clown where where like Batman give gives like you know the thumbs up mm-hmm. at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. I think the thing that this show really has shown is that, and like it's kind of like you know some of the like cool shit is like the fact that like Batman they really emphasize that Batman is not doing this for you know glory or mm-hmm. or fame that he's doing it because it's like you know the, the right thing to do the right thing like yeah. we talked to Mister Gordon yeah. You do it all day. I'm just a night shift. Yeah. Like, that's such a good line. Yeah. Like, he's like, I don't give a shit. I'm just doing it because I want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. But so, I guess we have to... Do you think for the season that there are any, like, low lights? Or no? Um, There weren't exactly, like, any low lights. I think, um... I mean, the only time... I actually want to say this right now. According to... uh, We actually didn't watch for the uh, retrospective because... I mean, like, the episodes are good, but, like, not that good. The, under, the Underdwellers. Mm. I want to point out, that's the only time Bruce Wayne ever considers actually killing someone on that show. Yeah. Um, they're actually... I think I think what makes it really... I think with some good episodes is that, like, a lot of them don't even, don't even have to do with Batman, like, specifically. It just feels like Batman gets tied into it in some way. Uh, okay, so, like... Like, point of view. We rag on... We... We rag on I got Batman in my, my in my basement, but dude, I'm sorry. The Clock King episode's kind of like Clock King was just stupidly funny. I like it because it's it, how, how stupidly funny it is. It like, was how, it was a funny episode, but it was stupid as hell. Like I just think it's funny because like the dude knows exactly every time and somehow has the, <laughs> has the money to go ahead and make bomb watches, but he has somehow lost his entire business. Homie, like like. He was, like, smart enough to, like, be able to bounce back. Mm-hmm. But, like, he just chose to not do that. Mm-hmm. He literally festered for, like, you know, 10 years and was, you know, just like, yeah, I am going to, you know, do crime now. Oh, by the way, remember uh, It's Never Too Late? Yes. That, that episode has Josh Keaton in it. Does it really? Uh-huh. He plays one of the young. He plays one of the uh, young versions of the uh, mob of the uh, brothers. Oh, cool. Yeah, actually, like, like there's like a like point of view. It's never too late. There are some gas and, uh, and uh, Joker's favorite. Like all of them just deal with like regular, sh- like not like regular shit, but like Batman is Batman really in those episodes. Barely Batman's in those episodes, but you know, like the he's not like the major focus. Uh huh. It's like actually really cool just seeing just like it gives the world something to breathe because Batman doesn't always have to be the starlight of the, of the show. And like, that's what makes him more interesting because he's not always the main character. I mean, like it's still his show. But I know. Like... Yeah. 
it gives Gotham time to like say like what the world's like outside of Batman. Yeah, because like it doesn't give the impression that like everything's just going on Batman's. World. Also, there is one thing that I really do want to bring up, and Liam told me the reasoning for this. But Gotham's sky slash like you know atmosphere. The aesthetic is so good in that show. Is God tier? Like I think the only like the Keaton, the only Keaton movies, like they're the only ones ever like matched like what I would want from Gotham. Where it feels like. What about like the Pattinson Batman movie? That just feels like a grungy city. Here's yeah. my thing. Here's the thing I've been that people like point out, and I think it's a good like Cosmo Variety Hour pointed that, and I think it's a good point. Gotham should feel not like a hellscape, mm -hmm. like not like it should be like it should feel like. It just feel like it should be. It should just feel like there's like nothing like normal about the place, like right. red sky. Like I think he made series like did that with like the red skies and like the dark, like the dark silhouettes. In fact, like the entire show is also drawn on drawn on dark paper, like really cool. Yeah, like and also like I just say like the animation for the show, like for being like the '90s, like it was really good. Like it's actually really good. It still kind of holds up too. It holds up really well to this day, honestly. And also, the intro. Is like oh yeah the intro, oh my god the intro <laughs> the intro is the dare I say the greatest intro to any show ever one of the greatest intros at least yeah like it's definitely in like the top five like like there's so much in there but it's so simple mm -hmm. and it's like amazing and like the the you know score is just like literally a sped up version of like you know Keaton's main theme uh huh. Like, do, 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 do. yeah, yeah, do, 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 do. and but at the very end, it turns like to a more darker thing. And then there, there is an episode later on where like Batman is fighting a group of guys, and they actually play the anime series theme, but it's like you know jazzed up. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, you mean the uh, a bullet for bullet? Yes, I want. That's like season two or three, right? I think it's. We'll get there when we two. get. There. We'll get there when we get there. But like for overall, for, for like the very beginning of the show, it like it's actually like super good. I think I see why this show was a uh, phenomenon when mm -hmm. it when it came out. Like I think, I think mo I think uh, I think at the end of the day, most of it's like most of it's like if I could say like only like just like two blunder episodes. Mm -hmm. Like forgotten, remember that one? Yes, Forgotten's like kind of a meh episode as well. Ah, uh, Forgotten the Underwellers and like I got my my guy got my my basement. They're like the they're like the worst episode. Yeah, like, but even like, they're not even that bad. Yeah, but like three out of twenty six is like good. That's a pretty good run considering. Yeah, and when other episodes are Heart of Ice, I a Joker's favor and uh, Christmas of the Joker, like and also Flutter Wings, also the uh, Catwoman episode. Can okay. I, it, you know something that's funny about that? Red Claw's accent is so bad, I didn't even notice it was Russian. Really? It's supposed She's supposed to be Russian, but I didn't even notice. I didn't notice either. And it's like, I thought she was German. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's where we get Batman being, like, based. Because, like, he... Uh, I don't care. I'm an equal opportunity <laughs> crime fighter. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, you do that. Um, No, but, like, dude, I love... I love season one, and th this is how you uh, introduce. Like this, is what I told Liam. This is my main take take takeaway. If you're gonna show someone the world of Batman, who's never read who's never read any of the comics or watched any of the shows, this is how you do it. They would be able to watch this and be like, "This is what Batman is." Yeah, like it's a good introductory. It's an introductory uh, show. And yeah. like the later shows, like I think most of them are actually really good for doing stuff that's that's different from the animated series. But the animated series, like probably the pinnacle of all uh, Batman content, in my opinion. Uh yeah. But the only thing that ever came close was Dark Knight. But Dark Knight's its own thing. I think Batman Beyond got like pretty close. Beyond's really like it's kind of like I think it's really interesting how like you know like Spider-Man shows like they all did like pretty much the same thing. Like they were all trying to do the same thing, kind of. Kind of. It's funny how the animated series. After the animated series came out, every Batman show tried to do something different because mm -hmm. it, just, they knew they couldn't compete with the animated series. Yeah, but Beyond came pretty close. Beyond was a, well, Beyond was a sequel. Yes. And Beyond, we'll get to Beyond. Oh my gosh, we get to Beyond. We get to watch two back-to-back -back banger shows. And then we get to watch two amazing shows. And we get to watch The Lord of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it when we get to it, but... Uh. Um, so, before we wrap it, what would you... 
do you want to do you want to grade it on a letter scale or like on a number? I don't even want to grade it. I just think it's great. You should like if you never watch a made series, go go watch it. Like it's on Amazon Prime right now. It's on Amazon Prime. Go watch it. If not, get HBO Max. If if not, um, the best way to watch it I found is using like the old. Get the old. Get the old complete collections. The new ones suck. Ass. They don't work on you know DVD players. Like no, they don't even work in PlayStation. I know. We tried like everything, and like it's like lower quality and everything. Like it's arguably speaking the worst way to watch a series. Get 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 the older ones. Yeah, get, get the older ones. Yeah, like we actually we still own them. Yeah, we have, we got the complete series because we wanted to just have all the episodes like on hand, and it sucked. They they did a terrible job translating. Like I know it was probably a copy after a copy after a copy. Yeah, and I'd rather have them be available than not. But at the same time, like guys, you could just publish them for good. Right. Yeah. Same thing for, same thing for the TMT. Uh cases as well like how do you ruin them how do you ruin complete collections i don't know but all i do know is this first season is you know gas and i'm really we're currently watching through season two now and um it's still gas but we will be we will be back soon with the season two retros all right oh, before, retros before we go before we go a quick question who's the character on the show the hottest character Alfred. <laughs>